Katrina has a question about palms. Do all palms fix phosphate? We have Phoenix canariensis. I love them, they're beautiful looking, aren't they? Um, here, how can I get the most out of my phosphate fixing plants? Well, yeah, as far as I know, all palms fix phosphate with a mycelium fungi attachment on the roots. And there's a very interesting way they bring phosphate rich material from usually rock sources. The hyphae bring it back to the root system of a plant and exchange it for starch created from photosynthesis in the palm fronds. And that process, that, that, that bringing the phosphate back, apparently it's squeezed in a molecular form around the outside of the hyphae. And it's got this great terminology, it's called plasmic streaming. So the materials of palms, the palm fronds when shredded up and all the detritus material off the palm are high in phosphate and they can be broken down and added to the soil, again through the fungi in the leaf litter on the ground as very classic um, phosphate rich, often slow to break down mulch, but that's great, that's slow release. So when you go into a uh, rainforest uh, in the tropics, you'll find at the wet tropics, it's more or less a palm forest. It's almost completely palm dominant. And the ground layer is made up of lots and lots of palms. Now you can make a palm circle because palm trees of all sorts actually work as a palm circle, even if they're not um, fruiting palms, you can still make a palm circle like a banana circle or a papaya circle. And you can cut the fronds or you can pick up the drop fronds and put them in the circle to tidy up. And you'll have, you're gonna have a phosphate breakdown in that circle with a great big fungal net going away from it. So around that circle, you're gonna have better growth. But you can also have palms like this dotted through your food forest to the advantage of phosphate accumulation. So this is a natural phosphate accumulator in amongst a, um, a food forest. This is a, um, a jelly palm or a wine palm, Budia capitata. Um, so eventually it will fruit. But it's a great advantage to, to use these sort of systems of natural accumulation of phosphate. And they're very passive. So in the tropics, in the wet tropics, you'll have that many palms and that much palm detritus matter on the ground that you've got extra phosphate to help the flowering. So you have so many layers in a forest that you get trees that fruit on the trunk and flower and fruit on the trunk with exotic flowers. And they're usually pollinated by bats and moths at night. And then there is even monkey pollinators and bird pollinators and insect pollinators, even frog pollinators. There's a great competition for flowering and, and being recognized by a pollinator. So there's so many exotic flowers in so many layers in the, in the wet tropics that you need the phosphate. You need that extra phosphate to create all that incredibly exotic flowering.